this is major news. Elon Musk has just filed a lawsuit against OpenAI and Sam Altman for breach of contract. The lawsuit accuses Altman with having betrayed an agreement from OpenAI's founding to remain as a non-profit company. Elon Musk is claiming that OpenAI, not closed AI, OpenAI, violated terms by becoming a closed source for profit corporation and is demanding that they open source their AI just like the name suggests open AI and what I really like about this is that it is going to be a jury trial hopefully Elon Musk claims that the company's non-profit for profit structure is inherently illegal and gives the company an unfair advantage versus startups looking to achieve the same goals because it does not need to pay taxes but investors who invest in open AI still make money but they are more likely to make money because the company does not need to pay taxes so therefore the upside is higher with lower potential downside because the risk is reduced because the company does not need to pay taxes. Elon Musk says it it's basically like playing a game of baseball where the elder team's baskets are worth twice as many points. If this court validates OpenAI's conduct here, any startup seeking to remain competitive in Silicon Valley would essentially be required to follow this OpenAI playbook. And check this out, having reached the threshold of AGI, which under the founding agreement, they were to develop for the benefit of humanity rather than for any for-profit company or personal profit, defendants instead radically departed from their mission in breach of the founding agreement. GPT-4 is an entirely closed model. The internal design of GPT-4 remains a secret and no code has been released. OpenAI has not published a paper describing any aspect of its internal design. It has simply issued press releases boasting about its performance. The internal details of GPT-4 are known only to OpenAI and on information and belief to Microsoft. GPT-4 is hence the opposite of OpenAI and it is closed for propriety commercial reasons. Microsoft stands to make a fortune selling GPT-4 to the public, which would not be possible if OpenAI, as it is required to do, makes the technology freely available to the public. Contrary to the founding agreement, defendants have chosen to use GPT-4 not for the benefit of humanity, but as proprietary technology to maximize profits for literally the largest company in the world. And it gets juicy here. In 2017, Mr. Brockman and Altman, who are basically OpenAI leaders right now, and others suggested transforming OpenAI from a non-profit to a for-profit organization after a series of communications over several weeks, Musk told Brockman and Altman, either go do something on your own or continue with OpenAI as a non-profit. I will no longer fund OpenAI until you have made a firm commitment to stay or I'm just being a fool who is essentially providing free funding to a startup, which is basically what Elon has done. The for-profit part of OpenAI right now is worth about a hundred billion dollars. In response, Allman told Musk, I remain enthusiastic about the non-profit structure. Gary Black should certainly find this bullish. Tesla has just increased the Model Y rear-wheel drive and long-range prices by $1,000 in the US. If you remember, when the Super Bowl was going on, Tesla cut the prices by $1,000 to take advantage of everyone advertising on the Super Bowl. And it said that it would be a limited time price adjustment. There were certainly doubts that Tesla is not going to put the price back up, but it did. Gary though is not making a comment whether he is happy with this or not, but earlier he was making comments about how Tesla is likely not to put the price back up and how that would not be a good thing for Tesla. So I'm pretty sure he's happy with this change. However, he's not happy with Tesla adjusting the price so often because it trains potential customers to wait for a deal. And certainly, if I am going to buy a Tesla vehicle, I will wait until the end of the quarter. There is no way I'm buying a Tesla vehicle in the beginning of the quarter. I would wait for a deal. But it wasn't really a real discount because if you looked at Tesla's inventory, the vehicles already had bigger discounts than whatever Tesla displayed on its configurator page. And here's the history of Tesla's prices in the US. There haven't really been any significant changes in the US for quite a while now. In China though, Tesla is offering an 8,000 
you want insurance subsidy upon completion of delivery, which is about a thousand USD and Tesla does that pretty much every quarter. So that's nothing new. Customers need to take delivery before the end of the quarter though. And Tesla is making another move in China. It just launched extended warranty insurance. So some people certainly will enjoy that. Although unless you're buying a Model S or an X, mm, I probably wouldn't really get it. The Model 3 and Model Y are pretty reliable vehicles, uh, but Model X, Model S, eh, I have a friend with the Model X, I wouldn't say the same thing. And Tesla is exporting a lot of vehicles currently from China. Currently, Tesla customers in China can receive almost up to $5,000 worth of incentives if they pick up their vehicle before the quarter ends. Preferential financing is included in that calculation. The province of Alberta, which is basically like a state in Canada, which is an oil state really, announced today that they will be instituting a $200 a year tax on EVs starting on January 1st, 2025. The tax will not apply to hybrids. According to the government, the tax is being added because EVs don't pay fuel taxes, noting that EVs tend to be heavier than ICE cars and cause more wear and tear on the province's roads. I think they actually got a fair point here. The government estimates it will bring in one million dollars in 2024 to 2025 period growing to 8 million by 2026 to 2027. You know, on the surface, this does sound reasonable, but then I start thinking about it. How come if I buy a small sedan versus a big, huge SUV, I don't need to pay extra tax based on how much my vehicle weighs? How come I don't need to do that? So their reasoning really does not make complete sense because if they applied that same logic, they would have to apply to other vehicles, which they are not doing, as far as I'm aware. Now the fuel taxes, yeah, that does make sense to me. If you're not pumping gas, you're using electricity. Keep in mind, Alberta is a state that has a lot of oil and they probably don't really see the EV transition as something that's good. Okay, we need the next generation superchargers to be built faster because Tesla tells Ford EV owners to occupy multiple superchargers in order to be able to plug again because the cables are too short. The main worry that I had about all of this was that you pull up in let's say a Ford Lightning and you take two spots and Tesla thinks that only one spot has been taken while in reality two spots have been taken but it does seem from what I'm reading here, Tesla itself in the app is telling you to take more than one spot, which I assume would then let Tesla know that two spots have been taken even though only one supercharger is being really actually used. While this is certainly somewhat annoying if the supercharger is crowded already, it's much better than looking at your Tesla screen and seeing, oh, there's one supercharger slot available and then you arrive and you realize this Ford Lightning or Ford Mach-E is taking two spots but only using one supercharger and now I cannot charge. I have to wait for much longer than I originally anticipated because there are zero superchargers left here. The CEO of Bugatti just commented on Elon Musk saying Tesla's new roadster will be able to hit zero to 60 miles per hour in under one second. It is possible with thrusters. We did the simulation. The problem is you release the air in two to three seconds and then you have a lot of dead weight that you are carrying around. So tanks, a compressor, valves, nozzles, etc. Same with fans. They just give you more grip, but you need something like 30,000 Newton meters on the wheels to accelerate below one second to 100 kilometers an hour, which means you need massive motors, inverters, gearboxes, drive shafts, etc. So thrusters are really the only way to go, he says, but they bring a lot of downsides as well. I think what I'm getting from this is that the Bugatti CEO says, well, mm, 
I don't think we can do it, so we'll just criticize you for trying. And AJ commented on this in detail. Based on his calculations, uh, he assumes that 100 kilograms or 200 pounds roughly of thrusters would be added to the vehicle, which would increase its weight by about 4% and 4%, that's not much. Keeping in mind that EVs already are heavier than most vehicles. Okay, this is a bit hilarious. The people have spoken Sabotruck ordered after re-explaining to my wife why I'm buying this. Hashtag Tesla stock. 66.5% of the people said Ross Gerber should trade in his Tesla plaid for the Cybertruck. Bradford says apparently Ross is no longer getting a Rivian. Will Ross fully come around when Tesla stock is $400 again? Uh, for that says Ross needs a permission from celebrities before he could make a purchasing decision. However, he is still getting a Rivian, but for his wife, not for himself. We might have another EV star that's going to go under soon because just not able to compete against Tesla. Fitzger warns it may run out of money in the next 12 months. They also said they won't spend on future vehicles like the Alaska pickup without striking a partnership with another automaker. Their net loss widened in Q4 to 463 million from 170 million a year ago. If you just looked at the stock without having any information, you would think this is like a bank stock that's going under with people running to the bank, taking all of their money from the bank. Can you believe that happened a year ago? That was a crazy time for a little while. The Fisker stock is down about 40% as I'm recording this. That's crazy. But if you zoom out just to six months, it really looks like eh, nothing, just uh, another regular day. <laughs> Fisker is also laying off 15% of its workforce. And Fisker itself says they have substantial doubt about its ability to continue. It needs to raise money, but they have no assurance that it will be a successful raise. Rivian vehicles will get access to Tesla's supercharger network in March. That's about 15,000 superchargers that Rivian customers will be able to access. I think Sawyer has the decent point here. By opening up the supercharger network, EV owners will now get a taste of the Tesla ownership experience and how easy and reliable superchargers are to use. It brings non-Tesla EV owners closer to Tesla's vehicles. Perhaps they will have a chat with a Tesla owner while charging, or maybe a Tesla owner will show the Mac E owner their Model Y. Perhaps it will even help sell a Tesla in the future. Unless Tesla stops innovating, doesn't improve its cars, and then some other vehicle is made by another company that can beat a Tesla, then it would cost Tesla some sales because they would see that car and they would maybe try it out. But that is only going to happen in some other parallel universe, not in this one. Tesla just made a pretty important comment about it. Supercharging, we are rapidly deploying our latest V4 supercharger post, which reaches all EVs in the same supercharger stall. Additionally, we encourage all vehicle manufacturers to standardize charge port locations to the rear driver's side or front passenger side. So right now we are in this weird transition period where we are going to experience some issues with some vehicles, but going forward, once the vehicles are redesigned, that is no longer going to be an issue even with V3 superchargers. Now I know some Tesla owners will be upset with other EVs accessing Tesla superchargers, but in the long run, I think it's actually going to benefit Tesla consumers by a lot because there's just going to be much more charging demand from other brands, which means Tesla can build many more charging locations and these charging locations will be closer to where ideally you would want to charge. For example, right now the closest supercharger from my home is about 15 minutes away. I would like that to be two minutes or just one minute ideally. Now I don't really need a supercharger next to my house, but what I do not particularly like is when I go on a road trip and I need to take a detour off 10 minutes. I don't like it. When I drove a gasoline powered vehicle, I never had to take any detours almost ever. But of course I was not able to refuel my vehicle at home. Occasionally I question, am I dreaming? Is this real life? Especially after seeing headlines like this. Toyota's Ted Ogawa says better to buy credits than waste EV investment. I mean, this is 
great for us Tesla stock investors, so I'm not really complaining about Toyota not taking the EV transition seriously, but they are shooting themselves in the foot. I really like this map. So it shows you all of the superchargers available to other EVs that, for example, also use Tesla's charging standard. And then you can also turn on uh, all superchargers that are available to Tesla. And you can see there is a pretty big difference. These are only available to other EVs and these are also available to all Tesla. So if you want to get the best charging experience, you definitely want to own a Tesla in the US. And here's what the East Coast of the US looks without Tesla only superchargers and with Tesla only superchargers, it's quite a bit more dense. If you go on road trips, definitely only get a Tesla in the US if you can. I'm talking regular long road trips. Once in a while, you're gonna be fine. But for the best experience, especially if you go somewhere around here, yeah, definitely you want to be in a Tesla. I mean, you can rely on Electrify America and all of these other um, companies that don't really work with Tesla superchargers, you never have an issue. Almost, almost never. Extremely rarely will you ever have an issue. A Tesla FSD validation vehicle has been seen in Munich, Germany, which suggests that perhaps FSD is going to be coming to Europe sooner than later. And someone says that he saw one at Ikea parking lot in Amsterdam as well two weeks ago, but there's no picture. So mm, we'll just say it's a rumor. The latest word about FSD coming to Europe is that maybe it's coming as early as September of this year. Tesla Model Y earns high praise from Canadian police after one year on the job. That's good. And we will probably see a lot more Tesla vehicles used by the police. Gary Black says Tesla stock is now selling at 49 times 2025 earnings, its lowest forward PE since early 2023 and before COVID. Tesla's median forward PE over the past five years is 57 with pricing Firming the Sabotra Halo effect kicking in and FSD approaching level four, Tesla negative revisions appear to be stabilizing next week. We have two things to watch out for Chinese deliveries, which could be back at 12 to 15,000 per week. And Baird is going to do a tour of the Austin plant. That's going to be on Tuesday. They will probably update their price target or reiterate it. He's not exactly a great analyst though, so I don't really care that much. But I do like reading research notes after someone has a tour of a Tesla facility because sometimes they have a few news items in there. Razad did a poll. Tesla FSD V12 will reach level 4 autonomy by the end of 2024. Probably yes, said most people. I am certainly excited about V12, but I don't think I am that bullish. I'm too conservative to make a prediction like that. We now have an actual picture of the tree houses that the protesters are making in the area that Tesla wants to clear and expand its uh, facilities. The yesterday's picture was well, just for illustration purposes. I thought I made that pretty clear by highlighting that it was a picture for illustration purposes only, but I did not say it out loud. Maybe next time I'll actually do that, but I didn't really think that was too important. But today we have an actual picture. The activists have expressed intentions to remain in place for weeks with police allowing the demonstration to continue until at least March 15th. The silliest thing about this whole thing is that these trees were planted here for commercial purposes. If that was not allowed, my understanding is these trees would have never been planted in the first place. Here's a list of all of the celebrities that have cyber trucks and almost every one of these uh, was a news story providing Tesla with free advertising. Gary says Tesla stock investors are underestimating the Cybertruck as the new IT vehicle with the celebrity crowd. Not everyone can get a Cybertruck, many will buy a Model S or a Model X. Celebrities buying Cybertrucks, I think, proves it pretty clearly that the Cybertruck and by extension Tesla has achieved this cool factor, which is bullish for Tesla. The supercar Blondie has over 110 million followers and here's what she had to say about the Cybertruck. I feel like a king in this 
car. I love it. Look how cool it is. Driving this around is bonkers. Everyone looks at you. Like if you if you want to be looked at, the Cybertruck is for you. It gets more attention than any car I've ever driven, ever. And that's saying something like, you know, multi, multi, multi million dollar cars and then the Cybertruck. Like everyone just stops, rolls down their windows. People shout at you from their cars. They're like, that's sick. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty wild experience. It's been fun. There is a rumor going around that ambient lighting and a front bumper camera will be added to the S and X in early March. So that's pretty soon. Omar posted this 69 minute drive in LA with zero takeovers. There were a few interventions, uh, specifically, he had to press the accelerator uh, pedal, uh, he said a couple of times, lots of slowness though and hesitation, Omar said also, but pretty good overall, he said, and yeah, looking at this, seems like it's driving all right here, certainly uh, V12 is uh, fairly impressive, and AI Driver actually just released a new FSD video. He just published it three hours ago, and it's a 30-minute video. It's very detailed. I'm going to watch it later today.